So today, the title of today's message is Don't Be a Goat. And I put just a small blurb for this on Facebook, and I guess I thought somebody was attacking other people, and I guess they were upset with that already. But uh, they, uh, the truth is, God puts all kinds of things in here to show us what not to be because he knows that we can be. Yeah. And he doesn't do it to beat us up. He does it for a roadmap to make sure that we don't fall prey to the tricks of the enemy. Amen. 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 Why? Because he loves you and he wants, he sets before you blessings and curses, right? And he wants you to live the blessed life. But do you know when everybody's holed up with an image that they don't like, most people's response is violent or denial or deception. That's not me. Do you know that bikers are some of the most stubborn people in the world? I mean, they got they, they love riding their motorcycle because they're independent. They like riding with the group, but they want to do it their way. Did you realize that? Some of you are then, you know, probably. maybe that's not you, but most of the bikers I've ever met are pretty self-confident, even if they're not confident. Self-assured, even if they're not real sure. They're not going to let you know it. Their bravado is on another level, usually. But most of them would do anything for you. They give you their shirt off their back. Bikers are some of the most generous people you'll ever meet. They're, the, you know these toy runs and all these other runs, and even I don't agree with poker runs and all the other stuff. But the point behind it is usually is they're tossing money into some kind of kitty to further some purpose that makes them feel better about being in the human being. But I can tell them that hole they're trying to fill can never be filled there; it can only be filled through Jesus. But there's nothing wrong with helping people. That's a good thing no matter how you do it, right? I'm just saying that hole won't be filled without Jesus. I feel like we have some watching online today that I'm talking to right now. So, uh, don't be a goat and don't play with goats. <laughs> don't be a goat and don't play with goats. You know, I used to say, well, at least I can milk a goat and get some cheese out of them while they're here. <laughs> but I've come to the point in my ministry in life that I'm tired of even milking goats it's going to come into more fruition in a moment but here's the thing when we start talking about this makes sense more when we start talking about these things people start jumping on one bandwagon or the other. Were we supposed to stay away from them? I thought we were supposed to go to them. We're going to differ a, the di we're going to really look at the differences in detail today so that you have a pure understanding of this by the time we're done. Everybody ready? Mm -hmm. So let's establish some ground rules, okay? Number one, as you're going to hear me say forever, it, it is on our platform for women's sake. It's a go ye gospel. He never told anybody to come in these doors. If you sit here and pray until doomsday, nobody's coming in because he told you to go out there to the highways and byways and compel them to come. That is the purpose behind Spirit Riders. If you don't own a motorcycle, we have lots of other ministries doing that too. But the point is to go out there, live in such a way that causes them to want to come to Christ. Do you know part of our bylaws for Spirit Riders is that you won't shove the gospel down somebody's throat? If you get caught doing that, you get sent to talk to me. It's a true story. I mean, does that, that's just, that's a, you know, I've had lots of people, but the truth is, is you're never going to win anybody by just shoving it down their throat. The point behind spirit riders is to take the spirit of God out there so they feel it. How many of the spirit of God changed your life? You get around it, you would just feel it. You recognize what it was. And to live in such a way, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times we've been on a ride, somebody come up and they just want to start asking questions. I don't have pastor on my thing anymore, or even, I used to have founder on there for a little while, but, you know, I ain't got nothing no more. No, no, nothing that dictates I'm the guy to talk to. 
Who does that? The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God. Do you see what I'm saying? God wants to do that with you. But how were they able to do that? I went, made myself available in places that they were comfortable in. Right? How many see the work? We should do that. Go ye into the highways and byways and compel them to come. All right. We've been all established that so far. Are you with me? I, I got like 10 sheets, man. Y'all better... If y'all start getting into preaching with me, I'll go, I'll go quicker. Maybe. <laughs> then he said unto them, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. So the Lord's talking about the marriage supper. He's talking about inviting those to come to be to Jesus. He sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. He went to the Jews. He said, I'm ready. Come on, let's go. You've been waiting on me? Let's get this thing. And then they all with one consent began to make excuse. How many people make, I can't go to church today. I mean, today is Micro Sunday. I got more excuses in my inbox than Carter had little liver pills. Why well, I stuttered that one out. <laughs> little liver pills. Say that three times real fast. But everybody has an excuse why they can't serve God, why they can't be there. Don't be one of those guys. The enemy will always give you an excuse, I promise you. He's the king of excuses. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. I go to prove them. I pray they have the excuse. I got work to do, man. Hey, I was a workaholic. Well, some people say I still am, but I'm only a workaholic for Jesus now. <laughs> That was meant to be funny. I wouldn't try to tell you about that. But do you see where he's making it? it? These are good things, but anything that's a good thing that comes in front of when God calls is not a great, is not a God thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Another said, I have married a wife, therefore I cannot come. I got wife duties, man. Don't you ever had a family? <laughs> My wife's got a honeydew list like you can't ever see. I mean, I'm going to have to be, I'm going to have to put off eternity just to get it done. <laughs> Not really. She don't write hers down. She just, she, she, she knows me. She just says them every once in a while. She knows they'll nag me until I do them. I didn't say you nag me. I said it'll nag me. <laughs> And so then, a, so that servant came and showed his Lord these things. And the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind. Go get all the ones that's done nothing for me, that offer can offer nothing, that can do it, not, nothing for me. Go and get them and bring them in, man. We're going to have us a party. I mean, we live in a world with blame, with main people, blind people. They have nothing to offer Jesus. He said, you go and get them. I offered the best to my best. They got too much going on. Fine. You, got, you go out there and you get whoever. I'm, you go get the ones that nobody else wants. I'll take them. That's what he's saying right here. And the servant said, the Lord, it is done as I has commanded, and yet there is room. Well, we went and got all them, Lord, now what? And the Lord said, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Look around this morning. Is his house filled? That means we all have a job to do, don't we? We need to go out into the highways and byways and compel them to come. And that I want to, if I could end the message today, and that would be a full message. How many feel the call of God, even right now, the anointing to start going and filling his house? But what about when you run into goats, man? Those things are cantankerous. They're always butting in, making trouble. They tear up everything. They're always putting their head in where it don't belong. Come on, some of you have obviously not dealt with as many goats as I have. 
I mean, goats are something else. Let me finish the last verse. For I say to you that none of these men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. All those ones that didn't put Jesus first ain't going to make it to the main supper in the last days of heaven. Hate that break that to you, but that's the facts. How many know family is important to God? It's all through His Word. How many know the Bible says a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat? He wouldn't tell you not to do something, not make a way to do it, right? So don't take it out of context like people have been trying to do for years. He just said, put me first and then trust me to take care of the rest. Yes, you still got to work. Yes, you got to take care of your family. I want to make you a shining example of how to take care of your family. I want to make you succeed at your job. I want to be you so blessed that you're a walking testimony of the goodness of God. You see how that goes? Now here's my little statement that got me in trouble. Goats are always buddy heads and thinking about themselves and putting their butts in where not needed and never helping those in need unless they are getting glory from it. As we do to the least of these, we do unto him, and the least him, the least, and the, the it's supposed to be an and, the least can repay you and have nothing to offer. Love them anyways and help them anyways. What have you done for the least today? You know, the church, we're going to look more of what a goat is. The, the church, the Christian world is full of goats. Which brings me to another verse that I want to read you. Now that we're there, it's not in their sheets. Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. I got 20 minutes and 10 pages. Who thinks I can do it? Another parable put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? For whence then have it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, at least while we, get, we gather up the tares, you root up also with the wheat of them. If we flogged every goat that was in the church, we'd make a mess and nobody would be here. Get it? You're going to have goats. But you can make a choice not to be a goat or get transformed if you get what The blood of Jesus gives you new DNA. It can make you from a goat to a sheep again. You still with me? So, but at least they gather up the tears. At least you root up also we with them. But let both grow together until the harvest. In the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them and gather the wheat into my barn. This is talking about the end times, the last days, at the judgment. If you're a tear, just because you get growing in the same field does not mean you're making heaven. Goats don't make heaven. Goats just think they're making heaven. Come on, I know I'm preaching strong this morning. <laughs> But the key is don't be a what? Yeah. Goat. And so, you know, these weeds and tares, they're going to be around you. And if you've been in any kind of church world for a while, when I was running from God, it seemed like all I dealt with was a bunch of goats. People that had a form of godliness and denied the power thereof. We're going to get to that verse in a moment. They'll tell you what God can do, then they'll tell you why he's not. It says believing that God is who he says he is can do what he said he could do. Well, I don't believe that part of scripture. What? How does that look? I mean, have you ever really thought about comments like that? What's that say to somebody that's seeking the truth? Today, we have a whole generation that just want to see. They're looking for a savior, but they want to see the real thing. 
They've seen all the people talking religious trash. They've seen all the wannabes. They've seen a million goats. They just want to see somebody that's living it. You know, not perfect. I had somebody say, you should stop saying that you're resistant. And I realized then that they didn't have a real good understanding of what I meant when I said that. And, you know, by the way, if you don't know that the Bible says resist the devil and he shall flee. The Bible says that, you know, every good and perfect gift comes out of the Father and lights above. John 10, 10 says he comes, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He can put lots of things in your mailbox. That's why he said resist. But you don't have to receive that with me that was free going along the final judgment now don't talk about these things but how many know there's a final judgment coming soon and you may fool yourself but on the last day when you at the final judgment you ain't fooling nobody your life will be played out like a movie screen and whether you're right or wrong it'll be played there and you will be judged by your life unless you happen to have the lamb stamp book of approval and all of that other stuff will be cast from the front as the east is from the west never to be remembered again and there won't be nothing against you on that record but how many goats you know goats that just said those tares they don't got the stamp because they're just playing church instead of having church you see where i'm going this morning so when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all the nations and he shall separate them one from another as the shepherd divideth the sheep from the goats. And when you shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left and then the king shall say to them on his right, Come ye and be blessed of my father and inherit the king prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Go team sheep! <laughs> For I was a hunger and you gave me meat. This is talking about physically but also spiritually. You have a world that is so hunger, hungry for the things of the spirit and the word of God. And we have it. Well, I don't want to say that. That's going to make my office life more uncomfortable. How do I think? How do you think? By the way, how do you think I know that? Because I dealt with all that same thought the first time I tried to decide to open my mouth up and start talking about the things of God. Oh, man, you know this is going to get rough. Oh. You know, the devil says the same stuff. Come on. And then the Lord said, he gave me, i tell you how the Lord dealt with me. I was studying the Bible. And it just so happens at the very moment that we're me and I'm having this conversation, the next day, I opened my Bible up and it said, uh, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you and deny you when you come before your father. <laughs> I guess I'm opening my mouth today. So you'll get that more later. For I was hungry, and he gave me meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me drink. I was a stranger, and he took me in. Naked, you clothed me, and I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. Then, then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when shall when saw we thee hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When did we? We didn't ever meet you, Jesus. And when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in our naked and clothed there, when we saw thee sick or in prison came unto thee, and the king shall answer and say unto them. Now remember when he said, Go out and get all those that are broken? The lame. So verily I say, as much as you have done unto the least of these, my brethren, ye have done unto me. How you treat people that can't get offer anything to you says everything about you and your relationship with God. Y'all still here? How many are ready to be a sheep? I'm from, I'm on, I want to be on team sheep, man. I don't want to be a goat. I'm team sheep all the way. Then shall you, you, he say also unto them on the left hand. Now he's talking to who? 
goats. Now these goats were in the same boat as the sheep. They thought they had it made. I went to church every Sunday. I did this, I did that. I even threw into that welfare fund once or twice. I'm just making it up because I don't want to get too specific because then somebody say I'm sharing personal stuff. You with me? Depart from me, ye cursed. Now, does God curse people or do people choose to be cursed? People choose to be cursed. He said, I set before you life and death. I set before you blessings and curses. He said, this day choose life. And then he gives you a whole roadmap called the Bible to make sure that you stay out of it. Right? And that way we can stay on team sheet. And then he goes on to tell them, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. This wasn't even made for you. He didn't want nobody to go there. He made it for the, the devil and his angels that, were, that, that tried to revolt against him. He made this place called hell just for them. It wasn't even made for you and me. It's going to be beyond any kind of horrible thing you can imagine. But he said, you chose to be cursed. Now that's where you're going to go and spend eternity completely separated from my presence. For I was hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, you visited me not. Now listen, I'm going to tell you some things. Uh, yeah, I, I am. Okay. We have to have wisdom and faith doing these things. When I was a single man, I had guys staying in my house all the time that were getting their life back together. Constantly, I just my house was a place of refuge, kind of like what the whole house is going to be someday when we get it finished. My house was always open. If you were on the side of the road, I stopped and I helped you and I fixed you. Whatever was wrong with your stuff, you were in a snowbank. My rope came out and you were getting out. Whatever it was, I took care of it. But how many know today, especially when I have a family, the Holy Spirit, which I'm going to get to that more, I have to be a little wiser. You don't always stop for every single person. And the world also has something called cell phones. So it's not like you're leaving somebody stranded as long as you know they have a way to get there. You know what I'm saying? So my point is, is I don't always stop for every single person anymore. I listen to the Holy Spirit when to stop. I suggest you do the same. Because not everything is what it seems to be in the world we live in. So I'm not saying don't stop. I'm just saying use wisdom when you do stop. Now, if somebody was trying to get their life back together, no matter who they were, they, I'd just bring them home and move them in to live with me. The last person I did that with was right after we were married and we had a small baby. And I let a man stay in, in, our, in our guest bedroom for a couple of days and got his life together. And uh, man, the Lord took me to the woodshed about it not being safe for my family. And I didn't even get a lot of sleep. And the Lord said, I'm gonna provide a place someday so you can continue this. But you don't do this in your home anymore. Well, he's provided a house that we get to do that in now. Do you, do, you, do you hear what I'm saying? So I'm not telling you to go out today and move somebody into your home just because you found somebody that was in need. I'm telling you, use wisdom as you do it. Don't go, you know, don't be so shocked by today's message. I don't want to be a goat. You, come with me. Get off the street. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Do you hear me? All right. Homelessness went down 1.2% today. <laughs> <laughs> then 
Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when we saw thee hungered or, or a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee. And then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, as much as you did to one of the least of these, you did it unto me. How I many know oh, Jesus cares about the people that have nothing to and some of the least, you know, some of the some of the poorest people I ever met had some of the most money, for the record. Because they were they everybody wanted something from them. And they were just so shut down, they didn't let anybody in. Some of the people that I met were that had everything, had, least, had had very few material things. They were some of the happiest people in the world, and people thought they had the least. So it's not about material things, it's about spiritual things. And about that they can't offer anything back to you. Okay? And they shall go away to everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. Anybody want to go to hell today? Just listen, I don't preach fire and brimstone messages all the time, you know, but if anybody wants to go to hell today, we need to change your your, your where you're going. You know, we really need to get you a different location. And if we have any goats in here, I pray you decide to change your mind today and go on Tim Sheep! <laughs> This is the same verse in a different translation. I'm going to read it really fast. When the Son of Man appears in his majestic glory with all his angels by their side, he will take his seat on his throne of splendor. All the nations will be gathered together before him, and like a shepherd who separates the sheep from the goats, he will shut separate all the people. The sheep he will put on his right side, and the goats on his left. And the king will turn to those on the right and say, you have a special place in my Father's heart. Come and experience the full inheritance of the kingdom realm that has been destined for you before the foundation of the world. Man, don't that just sound phenomenal? Jim Sheep. For when you saw me hungry, you fed me. And when you found me thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I had no place to stay, you invited me in. And when I was poorly clothed, you covered me. When I was sick, you tenderly cared for me. And when I was in prison, you visited me. Then the godly will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, give you food, nothing to drink? I'm going to jump on down. You can read all that at home. And he said, don't you know when you cared, verse 40, for one of the least important of these little ones, my true brothers and sisters, you demonstrated love for me. But listen, we have to be Jesus with skin on. They're not going to see love unless it comes through us. That is how you compel people to come to Christ. Still with me? All right. Then to those on the left, the king will say, Leave me! I want you to hear that again this morning. The Spirit, can you imagine Jesus, the Spirit of God, going, Leave me! That is what it'll be like for the goats. But I preached in your name. I prophesied in your name. I did all these things in your name. I had my life together. I helped here. I did this. I did that. He says, leave me. I don't want to be on Team Go. I don't want to be on Team Go. This is facts. This is not what ifs. This is how it will be on that day. I know we don't talk about it that often, but sometimes you need to look at it. There's a whole group of people that are goats that think they're okay. They've deceived themselves. I've had the pleasure in my ministry of helping a lot of people that were deceived become undeceived. How do you do that? By the love of God and holding the truth up. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Today I'm holding the truth up about it. If, you, if you're here today and you go, man, I've been on team, I've been on team go. I want to go to team sheep. I don't want to hear that. Then praise God, I've done my job. But remember, we're still going to how you deal with goats. I don't know if I'm going to make my time. <laughs> Leave me, for you are under the curse of eternal fire that has been destined for the devil and all his demons. I don't want to go there. Now listen, these are not just lost people. These are goats. Goats have a form of godliness. They play church, but they're really not sold out in church. Yes, sinners are going to hell. There's no doubt. 
But let me tell you, most sinners know where they're going. They won't be, Jesus won't have to tell them, believe me. They're like, I'm on. I know I'm a heathen. How do, you, how do you know that? Because after Adam and Eve ate of the tree, the tree of good and evil, we all know when we're really doing evil and we're doing good. Moving on. Last one, verse 46. And they will depart from his presence. If you wonder where I got the word departing from his, they'll depart from his presence forever and go into eternal punishment. But the godly and beloved sheep will enter into his eternal bliss. Go team sheep. Getting to pretty much the point of today's message, I know we're going a little long. Y'all ready? Can you take this? Y'all stand a little bit longer? We're just, I need a drink. That's the thing. They, uh, we're all playing in here. Someday we'll get more comfortable seating in here. How I many know we're living in the last days? All right, let's dive in. Good teaching still, it's all right. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This also, know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. I mean, no, we're living in it. We're not in the tribulation, but we are in the last days, and we have perilous times. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. How I many know everybody loves themselves? You don't believe them, just look at their selves. Just kidding. <laughs> Covetousness, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. That is what we have today. Without natural affection, they, they, they don't really know how to love, they just know how to lust. And they're doing it same sex. That's what that's talking about there. Truth breakers. You can make all the truces you want with them. They're never going to keep them. By the way, we're also talking about goats right here. False accusers and just plain lost people. Incompetent, fierce despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than the lovers of God. Notice it didn't say they didn't love God. It just said they loved the pleasures more than they loved God. That's important. I love God. But I like them other things that make me feel good better. Come on, I'm preaching today. They having a form of godliness. I go to church. Now listen, if you're just starting your walk with God and you're doing your best to hit the mark, do not let today's message beat you down into quitting. That's lies from the pits of hell. These are just marks that you can keep hitting to make your mark better. Don't be discouraged or you think, man, I can't ever do that. I couldn't do anything I do. It's in, in my weakness, the Bible says, his strength is made perfect through grace. That word grace means he empowers you to overcome. We all have weaknesses. The point is to see them. You're not, if you're not denying your weaknesses and you're working on them, then you're not a goat. Goats are refusing to see their weaknesses. See what I'm saying? But how many have dealt with anybody that have a form of godliness? I mean, they don't, they can get in there and quote scripture and, and shout you down and do all those kinds of things. But denying the power thereof from such, turn away. So, they say God can do all these things, but do they believe Jesus can raise the dead? Do they believe he can heal the sick? Do they believe that he can, you know, you ever talk to a police officer? They don't believe anything. They don't believe a tiger can change his stripes. They don't believe somebody that was once a drug addict can become a, a, a really someone that's a good for society, which I'm living proof. They don't believe those things. They don't believe the power that God can change. They can talk all those things, but you never see them apply the word in their life. 
Just because you know what God can do doesn't mean you believe that God will do. You see what I'm saying? Now what's he tell you to do with these people? Is he tell you to oh, go evangelize them every day? Come on, we're talking about how to deal with goats. I'm going to wrap it up. Come on. How to deal with goats. What's he tell you to do with them? Does he tell you to play with them, minister them, keep preaching at them every day till they get it? No. Now listen, I'm going to get to the point. I'll jump past. I'll jump past some and come back. But one my last point. God, whatever God does, he does to the point of saving their soul. Even when, just because he has us turn away for our benefit doesn't mean he stopped working on them and that you should stop praying for them. You should pray for them, but there comes a time that you don't need to be in fellowship with them because it's not going to do any good. Do you see what I'm saying? And someone say, what about if I'm married to one? Well, Praise God, the Bible says that the husband and the wife is covered by one, so they're covered. It doesn't mean they're going to heaven, but their covering is there, so that thing won't affect your life, and you keep living your life, and God will deal with them. Y'all still here? Yeah. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with lust, led away with divers' lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Didn't say they didn't know nothing, man. They can quote the Bible. They can do all kinds of things. Now, as Jammers and Jammers withstood Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. They're always sticking their butts and their heads in where it don't belong, causing trouble. Come on, do you see what I'm saying? What did he tell you to do at these times? Turn away. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. It, listen, what the Bible says, what's done in darkness comes to light. If God will always bring it forth if you'll let him deal with it. All scripture is breathed out by God, but those that has fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, and my goodness, I got a lot of notes today. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me in Antioch, in Locrum, and Lystra, which persecutes not dear, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and that all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And these last days, not everybody's going to like you. And there's going to be goats walking around looking like everybody likes them because they know how to play the church games. Let God worry about them. You just turn away from them. What about their soul? Well, there's plenty of people out there that aren't goats that need saving. Whole world full. I know this is strong because I have a heart for goats, in case you didn't know that. I want to see them get saved. I want to see them get woke up. But when it starts damaging you and the body you're in, you need to deal with the goats so that God can deal with them. Because if they think they're all right, they'll never wake up. I don't know, I think I got any goats really here today. I'm talking about how to deal with them, but if you've got some goat tendencies, deal with them. Okay, just for the record, I'm not trying, well, you're not getting, nobody's getting excommunicated today. <laughs> Never done that, and I don't think I ever will. I've turned a few over to get buffeted, but I always, they always knew they could come home too. So, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We're talking about what? The last days. Can you, is this not the world we live in? People are calling good evil and evil good and just doing all kinds of stuff. But continue thou in those things that thou hast learned, hast been assured of, knowing of them thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. 
All scripture is given by the inspiration of God, so all scripture is from God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, oh, there's that correction word, and for instruction in righteousness. <laughs> that the man of God might be perfect, truly furnished unto all good work. Continue what you know you're supposed to do. God's going to take care of the rest. Praise God, did she? <laughs> We are there. Okay? We're, we're, we're here right now. This is not something we're looking for. This is the time we're living in as a church and as believers. All right? But how many know no one knows the day? How many have been? I've been around long enough. I've, I've, I just don't understand it. it. Well, it's a bunch of goats, I guess. But every so few many years or decade, or somebody starts telling you they know the exact date Jesus is coming, and there'll be this big push coming, and they'll have signs and bands. I've seen poor people sell their whole businesses and homes and everything, getting ready for the day. And then I'm like, what are you going to do if that don't happen? Oh, they said it. God's coming. Yes, God is coming. But the Bible says no man knows the hour. So if he told you the hour, the only thing I can guarantee is it won't be that time. I mean, it's really not hard. But if you're a goat and you get to live any way you want and you know the time to be ready, boy, that sounds good, don't it? I only got to be ready on that day. Big smile. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Nobody knows. Not even an angel knows when the day's coming. But as the days of Noah, that's supposed to, that could be what we know, N-O-A-H, that's Noah, were so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Let's stop there for a moment. I know I'm going long today. Uh, they were so bad, the days of Noah, that he wiped out the entire planet, except for Noah and his sons. They were doing such atrocities that he said, ain't none of them worth saving. I'm wiping them all out. And Noah went to them and tried to convince them to come, and they said, ah, dude, we don't even know what rain is. It's never rained, and you're telling us it's going to be flooded. That's not how the world works, man. Just look around. You're building a big boat. What's the boat for? There's not even a body of water to put it in, stupid. <laughs> Noah was like, I want 10 sheep. <laughs> And he says, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. But listen, I want, as I've been preaching this today, this is the world we're living in. So don't be discouraged. Be encouraged as you see these, these marks us getting that much closer to Jesus coming back. And he says in these last days, he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Listen, we can have a Holy Ghost revival right here today. But goats are going to show up. And we need to know how to work to deal with the goats in love. And maybe we could even get them to change teams. But we should not be putting all of our energy into them. See that in the word today? Y'all see that? For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, married and giving to marriage, in the day that Noah entered into the ark. I mean, old people are just going about their lives out there without a care in the world. Go to church, whatever, man. I got lots of other things to do. I'm having a good time. I worked hard this week. Leave me alone. So don't be shocked when people act that way. The word said they would. And do not until the flood came and took them all, and so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Just like that, in the twinkling of an eye. Jesus is coming, and then he's going to be separating. Sheeps and goats. You want to be on team sheep. But even God doesn't want you around that. God doesn't really want you hanging around goats. What did he tell you to do? Now listen, we're not talking about Jesus. You say, Jesus went to the public the centers. He went to the bars. Now listen, he didn't go there every time. He went there one time. They got saved and they came with him. He didn't keep going back to them. See the difference? But goats are people that have a form of godliness. They have the talk to talk, but they ain't walking the walk. You don't want to spend a lot of time with them because they're going to corrupt your good character. 
says, but when God doesn't, but God doesn't want you around because bad company corrupts good character. He is always working on that. We'll look at that in a moment. Colossians chapter 5. It's 1 Corinthians 5. Well, that's what it should be. 1 Corinthians 5. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. I mean, Jesus said, if you even look upon a woman, lest after in your heart you've already committed fornication. So, you know, let's work on that. And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that you have done to this deed that might be taken away. I'm just going to jump on down. Those people that are doing these things and all these goats and all these people that are acting these atrocities, he said, deliver unto, verse 5, he says, deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Why do you do this? You turn them over and you say, listen, okay, fine. We have removing our covering. We've done everything we can to save your soul. You've chose team goat. So now we're going to remove the covering and God's not doing it but without the covering there now Satan has his full blown way that he can do whatever he wants in your life not because God wants it because you chose to be on that team and as a pastor sometimes there comes a time I gotta say okay God I'm gonna let you deal with it I've tried everything I can do and I'm gonna let you deal with it but my heart isn't get him God my heart is I pray they get go through enough that they realize how good they had it at the Father's house. And their flesh gets crucified enough that they come back and say, man, can I join Team Sheep? <laughs> Praise God, come on in. The water's just fine. That's the point behind these things. Are they fun for anybody involved? Absolutely not. But God set them up to save people's lives. Everything. Even whenever, you know, if you still go out and, act, and if, if someone is completely on team go and refuses to change and has a form of godless, but you go on with them and, and, and keep reassuring them and act like nothing's wrong, you're in just as much sin as they are. Because you're confirming what they're doing is okay. And they will never change. And you're risking them splitting the hell wide open. Y'all see where I'm at today. And then the next goes on to talk about, I'm not going to go there today, for a little, how many of you know, a little leaven that talk about old cooking things, it doesn't take a little much leaven to, write, to, to change something. Uh, for the youth, many years ago, I baked brownies. And uh, let them eat them, had two pans. I told, I, Lord forgive me, I, I wasn't, I don't remember if I did or not, to be honest. I don't remember the whole thing now, if I did or didn't. But I, I told them that one had some dog turd in it and the other one didn't. But it doesn't matter. They both taste fine, right? Do you know what nobody wanted to want even when it had a tiny speck of dog turd in it? It may not seem like much, but that little bit changed everything. First Corinthians 15, 33, going fast. Do not be what? Deceived. If you could not, if you, if you were impossible, if you were just so holy that you couldn't be deceived, would he put it in there to be not deceived? That means it's possible for you to be deceived, right? Me, you, everybody. Evil communications corrupt good manners. What you put in affects what comes out. So we need to be aware of that. Bad company corrupts good characters. Awake to righteousness and not for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak to this to your shame. Some people don't have enough of the Lord to know when they're doing something. When they're not, you need to educate yourself. Moving along. This is, I'm doing more teaching today than preaching. But I pray that when I get done with today's service, Everybody in here wants to be on team sheep. The point is, don't be a goat yourself. And yes, there does come a time to turn them over, but always in prayer and love. Spend your time on the ones who aren't faking it.